It's time for the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. On this edition of the Kirby on Sports Podcast, it's playoffs time. The playoffs are set for the NBA and NHL has already started in their respective bubbles. We'll also bring you some NFL news, including a new president in Washington and Des Bryant trying out in Baltimore. All that and so much more. But before we begin, we would like to thank our brand new sponsor at Regroup Building Services, specializing in custom homes, remodels, additions, and so much more. If you're looking for a new place to call home or just need repairs on your current home, look no further. Regroup Building Services has you covered. Make sure you check them out today at www.regroupbuildingservices.com. Once again, that's regroupbuildingservices.com. We do the honeydews that your honey don't. Make sure you tell them Josh sent you. We are also sponsored by PM Plus Reserves, now expanding their territory to serve the I-81 corridor from Hagerstown, Maryland to Stanton, Virginia. All right. It's time for another edition of the Kirby on Sports podcast, starting right now. I'm glad you connected. This is Dave Johnson, voice of the Washington Wizards. You have connected to the right place because you are listening to my man, Josh Kirby, on Sports Podcast. All right. We are back. Thank you all for sticking with us through the highs and the lows. We're glad to be back on another edition of the Kirby on Sports Podcast. You know who I am. I'm Josh Kirby. I'm joined by constant contributor Dan Dembski, as always. Before we begin, we're part of the Mayo Please podcast network, anchor.fm slash Mayo Please. We're proud to be sponsored by Regroup Building Services and PM Plus Reserves. Uh, New music there on the intro. Thank you to Productions by Q for that. Um, Nice, jazzy, upbeat music to get us started. We're pumped up for this podcast. Dan, how you been, sir? Doing well, man. Just uh, working, living the dream. Glad we have some sports back. Uh, it's still been weird because, you know, watching the games without any fans has been, uh, it's been weird. Even the pumped in crowd noise at it's, it's some of these games. But I'll tell you what, man, I, I'm, it's better to have that than no sports at all. I think you would agree. Yeah, I, I mean, it's really different. All the sports that are uh, around us and being played. I mean, it's just not the same without fans, you know? Exactly. I've been trying to watch it, and the cardboard cutouts, the pumping (laughs) crowd. It's weird. I know. And I'm like, I'd rather watch a baseball game with absolute silence. I I don't want that pumped in crowd noise. It just sounds weird. Well, and... I think the virtual fans that the NBA has done is actually pretty cool. Oh yeah, that that like, is cool. Like the live that look, is cool. you know, I think that's cool. I just I think the cardboard stuff is creepy, like honestly. <laughs> like well, it's I, especially th- someone with a big head and it's just like Well, that's how they're getting revenue too, you know, because yeah, people can buy them. It's mainly season ticket holders right. or people buying their place in the stands as a cardboard cutout for the whole season. Which is smart because if you don't have fans in the stadium for 60 games, you have to make your money somehow. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so... It's smart, really. It's a smart strategy. Yeah, there's a lot of smart strategies going around during these unprecedented times with COVID-19. But um, we're rolling on. Everybody else is rolling on. 
it, 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 it's just great to see some sort of sports on. So let's get right into it. Uh, starting with our respective playoff bubbles, the NHL and the NBA. The NHL playoffs has kicked off um, earlier this week. Um, I do like the bubble format, um, but there has been one flaw that has been exposed, in my opinion, and that uh, I want to talk about this game, too. The game won the Columbus Blue Jackets against the Tampa Bay Lightning. That went into five overtimes. Mm-hmm. Five. That's playoff hockey, baby. I've watched some of that. Oh, my goodness. That game went so late. They had to reschedule the next game for tomorrow because they only use one rank. Right, And right. they – Take 90 minutes in between games to disinfect everything, make sure everything's all prepared, ready to go, and then you have the next game. Right. But if you have a five-overtime game as Columbus and Tampa Bay in game one, you, you're going to have to find a solution, and they moved it to the next day, which isn't a bad thing if they aren't in a time crunch. But, right. y- you know, it's... Some it puts it. It puts still still puts it behind though. Essentially, yeah. yeah essentially, yeah. And, yeah. You know, uh, same with the MLB. All these teams are popping positive for COVID. We saw this with the Phillies. The Yankees had to cancel. The Marlins, the Marlins. were the first team, I think. Yeah, yeah, the Marlins with six team. We talked about this last episode, but I, I mean, they had to rearrange the whole schedule. Yeah. Baltimore was slated to play a three game uh, series there, I think, in yeah. Miami, and they had to. Yeah, they had to just skip it and go to the next series. Uh huh. Yeah. And the and what was it? The Marlins. Yeah. And same with the Nats. They took yep. the weekend off because mm-hmm. of the Marlins. Exactly. Spoke about this earlier, but I I just want to sort of talk about this Columbus game really quick. Five overtimes, five, and Columbus's goalie had eighty eight saves. That's just. That's for for five overtimes, eighty eight saves. That is unreal, man. I I mean, granted, you have three pe- three, four, five, six, seven, eight periods, and so that's like four extra. Right. But eighty eight saves. That's incredible. Yeah, that stat is jarring to me. I mean, <laughs> you can go. What? Maybe we could look this up. But what? What's a no? What is a good? You know. Like how many saves should a goalie have in a season? Essentially, I know that I know they have a lot more than eighty-eight for sure. Um, <laughs> but like, what chunk would that take up? You know, what chunk of games would that take up normally? You know what I mean? Like, you're probably talking what? I'm searching this up it, now. Yeah, let's see what let's see well, what we what, can get. What's, what's the average here? I want to see the average here. Yeah. So, um, while I'm doing that, I'm sure it's. I'm sure like that. That's at least eight games worth, I would be. Maybe not eight. Well, I mean, it depends. It depends, I guess. I mean, how many saves do you have in a typical game? Like, like let, let's take what, a like look here. What, f- like 15, 20 maybe? Let, let's look at the box score of Calgary-Dallas. 26 saves. Yeah, t- I said 15, 20. Both 26 saves by their goalies. But okay. granted, that was in regulation. That's four games worth of saves in one Technic in one technical game, that's insane, dude. Oh my gosh, like it, it, it's crazy because you see these games and they're averaging. It, uh, let's just look at let's this one. Twenty six. Let's just use that for a frame of reference. Yeah. Twenty. That's the Blackhawks, yeah. the Hawks, and the Vegas Golden Knights. So but twenty to thirty is the usually around the is what the I, average. I is. would say. Yeah, yeah, I would say, but uh, like that stat is incredible, and to do that. In the bubble with playoff hockey, it's like the atmosphere is sort of there, but it just sucks. He must have been chugging Gatorade. He must have been, like, worn out by then, by the he end. He probably was. He probably needed an IV from, from being out there so long and making that many saves. That's <laughs> just unreal, man. 88 saves. That's mind-blowing. It, it just sucks, though, because I, I was watching some hockey, and it's not the same, though, because mm-hmm. there are no fans, mm-hmm. no pumped-in crowd noise. There, It's just it's just half 
of what the whole Stanley Cup playoff experience should be like. And the great thing about playoff sports are the fans, nine times out of ten. I think that gives an extra element, not just in hockey, but in baseball, football, basketball. The fans and the crowd noise, it's like the natural crowd noise, yeah. takes it to a whole other level and says, this is playoff sports. I mean, that's, that's just how it is. And it definitely is different, and it is weird. And like I talked said at the beginning of the podcast, um, you know, it's it's just bizarre with the cardboard cutouts. I think the virtual fans are cool, but it's not the same. Like you don't get noise from virtual fans or from you know, even from pumped in crowd noise. How like really? That's not that loud compared to sometimes how loud, especially those hockey arenas get when there's a huge goal oh, yeah. scored or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a- another thing I want to sort of put into play, I know you're sort of interested in this as I am, um, The both in the MLB and the NHL, I believe, and yet yeah, and the NBA, pretty much anywhere. Um yeah, uh, I want to start with the MLB here. The okay. broadcast crews stay at home. Yeah, but when they go on the ro- when the team goes on the road, they have the one booth TV set up everywhere, and they're calling the games from their home booth. Yep, nobody travels, so yep. that's very interesting. In um, basketball, I saw they were just in studio calling the games. Um, NHL, pretty much the same thing. Um, it's kind of bizarre, right? I mean, you would think because two two announcers and, and and maybe a you know a broadcast direction crew or whatever. How much space do they really take up with the MLB you know um, broadcast? But it's weird that they're not at the actual games, except except for the home games, like you said. But but um, it's it's strange. It's confusing least. to me because it's like if you're not there in person, is it actually live? I, I know yeah, it's it's still live because you're getting live pictures. You're, you're getting live footage. Yeah. Um, like not what we see on cable. You know, it's like delayed a few seconds. Sure. I mean, or th- but radio. That's, but that's that's normal anyway. I mean, you see that whether it's whether they're there or not. You know what I mean? Whether they're remotely doing it or whether they're doing it in person. So yeah. It is strange. I, I noticed that um, with an Orioles game earlier this year. I'm like, why are they sitting in an empty stadium? Like that is so bizarre. But. You know, it works. I mean, the announcing is still as good as it always has been, I yeah. think. Um, I was watching, excuse me, the Nats O's yesterday and listened to Bob and FP, and, and they were good as usual. So, um, I, I mean, yeah, they're still good. It's just very it's just interesting it's how they're doing things. You I know? totally agree. You know, so uh, back to the NHL. Um, now I, I haven't really watched a whole lot. Me but either. <laughs> I mean, I'm a bad what? sports fan. <laughs> hey, hey, we all have lives, but the Capitals, they're on the brink mm-hmm. of elimination. I've watched two out of their three games. They went up early and then blew it. Blew all three games. And they would always be up early. Game one, I just want to start out and say Tom Wilson, yeah, you can stick up for your teammates and fight but don't get in the penalty box three times <laughs> he was in the penalty box three four times in that game one i i, I just want to see this here it's kind of become his mo like i know caps fans love him for it for, you know and i'm a caps fan so for obvious reasons i like that but sometimes it does it does put the put your team in jeopardy when you get in the penalty box three times that's for one game that's ridiculous like you got to Okay, after the first time, you got to start putting it in check. But by number two, you you got to chill out, man. You got to you got to take a chill pill there or something. Cheese. I got one for Tom Wilson. I think he was in there three or four times. Like mm-hmm. two for Tom Wilson. <laughs> I, I mean, it's ridiculous. Come on. He's he's an three he's, for Tom Wilson for fighting. He's just that kind of player. I mean, he's an aggressive. Yeah, at, I mean, your, your I get player. that, yeah. but if but you're, you're the, hurting your team, though, yes, I mean, it, it's all right to stick up for your team, but if you're doing it more than once and you're constantly getting sent to the box, that's not helping. That's hurting your team, and we, I've seen that in game one, and I believe in game two as well. Um, it was either game two or game three. People kept going into the penalty box. Stupid penalties, careless mistakes. I've been hearing people say Todd Reardon's gone after this season. 
in my opinion, I don't think it's a good sample size after no. COVID and everything no. that has been going on to say, oh, Reardon sucks. He needs to go. Because they've been off for who knows how long. You know? And, uh, I, I mean, to base Reardon's performance off a long break coming back into the Stanley Cup qualifiers and playoffs, I don't think that's fair, to be honest. Some people are going to disagree with me, but I just think Reardon will probably stay. Yeah, but, I uh, agree. I mean, it's just d- different times. And the teams have come off a long break, and other teams may emerge that we aren't expecting in these playoffs. Yeah. Um, here's the big takeaway from this series. Um, the shots on goal. If you just look at game one, I mean, the Caps. I mean, how, how good have the Caps been over the years, Josh? At least putting shots on goal, right? Um, so they were out shot 20 to 11 in game one. I don't have the stats right now for game two. Um, and they were outscored 3-0 three, three at even strength. That's a Washington Post article today written by uh, Neil Greenberg, who, by the way, is a great sports writer. Um, so they have they've struggled at really what their bread and butter has been for so many years, which has been their offensive play. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on that because you've, you've watched a little bit more playoff hockey than I have. Um, I wish I could have... I always forget that the Caps are playing, and then I, I end up kind of seeing the highlights and stuff later on. Yeah. So I don't get a chance to watch them live, but I really want to watch uh, with this possible elimination game we got coming up now. I, I mean, they just got to handle the puck and stop making careless penalties, putting them in the penalty box. They have to stay strong, stay aggressive. Hey, I, I mean, if the Caps get eliminated this game, I'm not going to be mad because this is a different type of season. If they don't under make- normal circumstances, I I don't I definitely agree. I definitely agree. If there was normal not COVID world that we lived in, yeah, then then, then I would be upset. They, the and expectations Todd would are be higher. fired. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I I mean I'm not saying keep your team to a low standard, but uh, I mean keep them at the high standard, but d- just put into account with COVID and everything. You know it. It's it's just interesting, but um, I I just want to go into these uh, Stanley Cup playoffs, the um, the bracket for you, starting with the Western Conference, just to get an idea of what we are looking at here. The Golden Knights facing the Chicago Blackhawks, the one in the five, the one in the eight seed, the two in the the number two seed, the Avalanche facing the number seven Coyotes. The Dallas Stars at the number three seed to the Calgary Calgary Flames, <laughs> the twister. number six seed. Then the number four seed, the St. Louis Blues, former Stanley Cup champion, yep. facing the Canucks. And on the Eastern Conference, the Flyers, the number one seed, the Canadians, the number eight seed, the Lightnings and blue, the Lightning and Blue Jackets. I just think that's going to be a great series all the way. The Lightning have played the Blue Jackets in years past, and it's been a great series all around. The Caps and the Islanders. Yeah, you know, you know. I I'm sorry. Before I I'm just going all over the place, but <laughs> I totally forgot to mention the one thing about the Caps and the Islanders. Former Caps head coach Barry Trotz. He's yep. coaching the Islanders. Yep, he's uh I feel seems like, to yeah. I feel like that's playing a big advantage yeah. in why the Caps are down 3-0 because Barry Trotz coached this team. There's an assistant coach Mitch Korn who's on the Islanders staff as well. And most um, of these players have stayed with the Capitals beyond this 2018 Stanley Cup run. So, do you think that plays a part in it? I think he knows he knows a lot about the Capitals. I think he knows their strengths and their weaknesses, and he's found a way to sort of uncover that. Um, you know, I, I think I think that's one of the biggest weapons people don't talk about is when you play against your former coach, who um, especially who you've had success with, like they had with Barry Trotz. So, um, you know, I, I I think he's had their number in this series so far. And, and look, the Caps, if they were able to come back, would only be the fifth team in. NHL history to come back from a 3-0 deficit. But hey, 
history was made for a reason here. You know, we it was made to be beaten. If you they will. came back two uh, two nothing on that Stanley Cup run to Columbus, if you remember that. Right, but three is a different animal altogether. Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking about mm-hmm. a, a lot of you got to win four games in a row. That's just really tough. So. Yeah, so so moving on here, um, after the Caps and the Islanders, it's the number four Boston Burns and the Carolina Hurricanes. All really great matchups. I've watched occasionally, kept track of the scores, and it, I, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far from the bubble. Uh, no positive tests, so that's great news. Yeah. That means the bubble it is the working. Purpose. Exactly. Yeah, it means the bubble is working on like the MLB which I have no clue how the MLB would start a bubble. So, yeah, th- that's a topic for another discussion. But the interesting part about these Stanley Cup playoffs, we have talked about in the in the past, Dan. After the first round, everybody gets reseeded. So, yeah. So in the Western and the Eastern, the same. The one plays the four and the two plays the, th- the three. I like that. I like that. It gives a, it mixes things up a little bit with um what has been going on with COVID. I think it is warranted to have a fair and fun Stanley Cup playoffs. Agreed, man. Agreed. Yeah, so that's pretty much all I have from NHL. Um same here. The bubble's working though. Yeah, I think that's the big takeaway here. Um, right? I, I, I think the concern when you talk about other sports, what what uh the NHL and the NBA as well has done a good job of is is keeping the COVID numbers down. I don't know if there's any sort of range of players who have gotten it. I know um I, I don't think the NBA has had any, I don't think and the NHL has either, or maybe maybe just a couple guys, but um look if they do what they're supposed to do um, like they've like they've been asked to do, and they they take care of what they're supposed to take care of, then this could work. I mean, this is a blueprint I think for other sports to come later in the fall and winter as well. So, all right, so let's give you um the rundown of the NBA playoffs bracket. The playoffs are set. What do you know? The Los Angeles Lakers are the number one seed. Surprise, surprise. How about that, LeBron James in the box on the. Eastern side, mm-hmm. the number one seed. The Lakers face the number eight seed Trailblazers. The Bucks face the number eight seed Magic. Um, the Rockets, number four seed, face the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, the number five seed. The Nuggets face the Utah Jazz, the Nuggets three seed, and the Jazz the sixth seed. The Clippers at the number two seed and the Mavericks at the number seven seed. On the Eastern Conference side, the Pacers, number four seed, facing the Miami Heat, the number five seed. The Celtics, the number three seed, facing the 76ers, the number six seed. The Raptors, the number two seed, facing the Nets, the number seven seed. And the Raptors Um, won today 134-110 to in game one, and the Nuggets beat the Jazz 135-125. Yes, so they have started. I thought they haven't started yet. Yeah, the this afternoon I think was the first. Uh, yeah, the so uh, m- my takeaway, starting with the play-in games, the uh, Phoenix Suns went eight and zero and ended up not making the cut, hmm. which I thought was very strange. They seem to be playing very well from what I've seen through the highlights and stuff. To be honest with you, I haven't watched that much NBA. I haven't either. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just not really. I I I haven't been really getting interested in the NBA. I mean, the bubble's working. It I w- I've been watching highlights, but I mean, it just doesn't interest me in this bubble format for some reason. And I I've seen highlights and stuff, but you know. Uh, I, I, but I do think the Celtics have a really good shot at making it all the way. Um, the Wizards, as you know, they were in it, but they did not advance to the playoffs. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the Bucks being the number one seed and the Lakers being the number one seed, nobody's surprised about that. Kind of laughing because the Bucks play the Magic. <laughs> uh, I got a feeling that's going to be a sweep. Um, 
I give the Blazers a better chance against the Lakers. I th- I think I think they can maybe upset the Lakers. I I do. I think it's going to take a lot to upset LeBron, Anthony mm-hmm. Davis, and all the other star power they have on that team. But uh, um, we'll see. I I like same as you. I haven't paid much attention in these play-in games, mostly because I'm a Pelicans fan and my team is trash. And <laughs> every time I watched them, they lost. So I was like, this is just painful, and I don't want to watch this. So. <laughs> and I had better things to do. Uh, but my one point I will take from this um, is don't expect the top team to make it all the way. Same thing with the NHL. I agree. Look for there's, the there's underdog. There's going to be some underdogs, yeah. Look for the underdog to take it. I see it more in the NHL, and maybe it's just because of what's happened in uh-huh. the last couple years. I agree. Um, I'm not going to say it won't happen in the NBA. I just think there's more of a chance in the NHL than in the NBA because yeah. the NBA is a league where stars mean everything. I mean, really, because you only have five guys on the court at once. You know, if you have three stars, then you're set. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Most times, nine times out of ten. Now, funnier things have happened, but uh, <laughs> I, I definitely, I, I do agree though. I think there's going to be some teams that surprise people. I don't know about winning a championship, um, but like I said. You know, stuff happens. I almost, yeah. So, we'll yes. see. So, the NBA playoffs have started. Um, that is your breakdown of the NBA playoffs. Um, before we move on, folks, to um, some other topics, I uh, just wanted to let you know that we do have a merch line, if you are not aware. Um, it's at teespring.com slash stores slash JK Sports Pod. We have hoodies shirts, everything, and we'd love for you to check it out. Dan's rocking some gear. I do. I have a very nice snapback. That's not on the website, unfortunately, Yeah. but contact us via social media if you want to order one, but please, we would greatly appreciate the support. Teespring.com slash stores slash JK Sports Pod. You can get all your nice shirts, hoodies, uh, clothing, etc. Uh, I I know Dan has a nice shirt coming on the way. Heck Thank yeah. you, Dan. Yeah, uh, it, it it's just great to see the support. If you want to rep the brand, that's how you do it. Teespring dot com slash stores slash JK Sports Pod. Continuing on into the NFL, the NFL is cracking down. Uh, Seahawks player, I forget his name, brought his girlfriend yeah, into the that. team facility <laughs> dressed as a Seahawks player. Dressed, yep. What What did that entail? Just uh, exactly that. I mean, a he, jumpsuit with the Seattle Seahawks, or I don't know, full pads, a helmet. But anyways, who? Uh, if you can get that guy's name, I'd appreciate it. But yeah, let me let me do some he research. He got uh, he got released. That 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 just goes to show that. The NFL isn't messing around. Teams aren't messing around. COVID's serious. But who would do that? Come on. Here that, we go. It, it's, Here we go. It's hilarious. Take it away, Dan. Kimas Siverand. Uh, He's a rookie uh, out of... A rookie. Um, let's see. Where did he go to college? I wonder what would happen if Russell Wilson did something like that. Oh my gosh! Oh, he would get a pass because he's Russell Wilson. <laughs> you know, if it if it happened, it was anybody else, then. <laughs> do you do you think he just got released because he was a rookie? Yeah, I don't know. But Oklahoma State. Okay, I I thought who his would name... do that? Who? That's just stupid, man. Like, <laughs> here's the thing. I, I saw that story and I was like. Really? There were so many memes made about that too that were, were oh my really funny. Gosh. Oh um, my! I, I I saw it all over Twitter, all over Facebook. It was hilarious. Oh uh, yeah. I, in some sort of way, but yet you just don't want to see it, you know, because we want to make sure we have a safe NFL season. Right. And if they're sneaking girls into the facilities, and here's the thing too. They have a right to opt out. I mean, they can opt out any time. Yeah. I think I, I, I don't know I don't know like when it goes up to. <clears throat> excuse me, but um they they also made the decision to be in the bubble or the I guess it's kind of technically a bubble, you know, technically. So um that means nobody in, nobody out technically. 
I just said technically like eight times in one sentence. <laughs> I got to get some new grammar, man. Oh, my gosh. I got a bachelor's degree and still use the same words over and over. But it's just silly to me. Like, why? You have a good point. Why in the world would you do that? You know the risks. You know you know how the rules are. And also, Pete Carroll, um, he's, he's kind of strict, you know, in general. I don't think I want to cross him. <laughs> I don't think I want to cross any NFL head coach, but especially... <laughs> I think Pete Carroll's a little uh, crazy, so um, yeah, it's it's just dumb. It's it's just uh-huh. really dumb, and you know he's he's only a rookie. Maybe he deserves a second chance. I don't know, but it's probably not going to be this season. I wouldn't think. Yeah. So you want to hear something else stupid going yeah, around the league? I love stupid news. What's up? Um, and CBS Sports dot com, uh, written by Jordan DeJohnny on August sixteenth. 2020, uh, Trent Williams of the 49ers hasn't played a snap what? with the San Francisco 49ers. Uh-huh. It says in the article, hasn't played a down for his new team yet, but he may have already done something to put himself in hot water. <laughs> there was an Instagram video, it says here, showing Trent Williams in the driver's seat of a Ferrari going 125 miles per hour. <sighs> <laughs> This guy's an idiot. Washington a football dope. team, I think you made the right decision releasing yeah. Trent Williams. He guy just can't he can't help himself, man. He he has to be in trouble somehow. So the article pr- uh, uh, the article geez. says it's tough to prove that he was there, but there's some controversy I just wanted to put out there. Why do players do the stuff they do? I think they get bored, quite honestly. Um I don't know. I can't get in the mind of an NFL player. I've never been even close to that level of ath- athletic, so <laughs> it's hard I, I, for me I to understand either. anyway. And Darius yeah. Geis. Darius Geis. Yeah, Darius Geis got released. Jeez. Yeah, it's, that's, that's a messy I mean, situation. I mean, Washington had no choice because they would get ridiculed and mocked and disgraced if they kept Darius Geis because they're trying to implement change. And... Apparently, I'm not sure if these sources are true on this. I heard that Darius Geis hurt his knee mm-hmm. um, before the abuse allegations, domestic abuse. Washington was right in releasing Darius Geis. They're all for change, and they're not going to put up with that. And yeah. they, they did it quickly because the fans would judge them. You can't have that lingering, yeah. And, Absolutely. And, and that's just the, the attitude now, um, I think, in the NFL in general uh, for those sort of situations. I don't know how much – I don't know if there was an investigation done or how – I mean, was it – He turned himself in. He turned himself in, yeah. <laughs> Me and my dad had a joke. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Me and my dad had a joke. Darius Geis – Hurt his knee trying to run from the police. <laughs> <laughs> so he turned himself trying to, in. Trying to run from Roger Goodell. I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. Tripped right? and hit his knee. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. But It's crazy, man. It it, it really Darius is. Darius Geist, the potential he had, he seemed like a great outgoing guy. And then This is to, just the curse of the Washington football team. Yeah, it, it to really see is. him do that. It really is. It's just a continua- continuation. To see him do that, I was very surprised. But yeah. Washington, they did the right thing releasing him For sure. hastily. For sure. But my, my my thing is Darius Geis gets released, but what about Reuben Foster? He's activated. Yeah. It's uh, a good point. <laughs> that doesn't make <laughs> sense to me. No, but that's a good point. Anyways, other news from Washington, sticking with Washington. What a storybook what a storybook way to do this. Alex Smith has been released from the PUP list. He is fully prepared, active. He is on an active roster with Washington. He has been cleared to play, essentially. Incredible. He had pretty much, I think, 17, 16 surgeries. 17, to fix, yeah. To fix his broken leg. Yep. You you see the remarkable career Alex Smith had, and for him to get cleared to play football again—it's amazing, dude. It's an I amazing I story. don't know I don't know if he'll be the same, but it's an amazing story. Well, I I don't know if he he's the starter either, and I think that's up for I, debate either. Uh, I, th- I, I think Dwayne Haskins, although he has struggled at times, I think he's proven that he's the future of the franchise, no doubt. And I think Alex Smith understands that. Alex um, Smith's but, been out for like. 
two, three years. He it'll be it's like it's it's like one year and nine months since his injury. Well, it, here's my thing. I I'm glad for Alex Smith that he's doing well. He got oh, sprayed absolutely. with champagne by his family. I saw that. He's healthy. <laughs> he's back playing. He's with Washington. But the thing is, I don't want there to be another quarterback controversy all because Alex right. Smith is back and can play. He's been out for a year or two. And he's been out almost two full seasons. With Ron, full season. with Ron Rivera at the helm of this team. who He hasn't had a chance to really develop a chemistry with yet, and, I don't think. And who knows? I've heard reports that Kyle Allen might be the starter if he doesn't like what <laughs> Haskin uh, he sees out of Haskin. Mm-hmm. And Kyle Allen was playing for Rivera in Carolina. Mm-hmm. So... I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm happy for Alex Smith. No, hands down, cannot be happier for the man. Because I don't know. If I, I mean, that was a painful injury. I saw that we were beating the Texans, then they ended up losing, and that was the season where we Washington went through three, four quarterbacks. Was that? And you all had a good record by then. It was six and two, it or was six five and three. three, six and three, and yeah. then they crapped the bed. Yeah, they could. Because I don't, I don't Alex think they won another Smith game. got injured. Um, who was it? Colt McCoy. Yeah, he got hurt He's too. He's with the Giants now. He he broke his leg the next game or something. Around I don't know. Then, yeah. then Mark Sanchez. <laughs> Jeez. Why in the world do they and, ever give him a chance? End your career in Washington. Why Ooh, don't you, Mark why Sanchez? Why in the world do they give him? Was he even playing in the NFL then? <laughs> they picked him oh, up. Oh, what about Josh Johnson? He was Josh out of the NFL. Josh Johnson. He was out of the NFL for. Like six years or something. Well, they beat the Jaguars and then <laughs> got shut out by the Eagles. I I remember this season clearly. Ask me anything about that season, I can probably tell you. But I'm good. Oh my gosh, it was <laughs> crazy. Then they drafted Haskins, you know. But yeah. I I just don't want there to be a quarterback controversy. But um, I'm happy as heck. For Alex Smith, he has gone through a lot of adversity. He might have lost his leg. He almost had his leg amputated, yeah. It, it's almost. just great to see. If Alex Smith gets another chance to start, I want him to take that. If it's with Washington or another team, I want him to take it because he deserves it. I don't think if I don't think he should, but I, I think deep down inside he wants to play, obviously. He's even said, you know, um, he, he feels like uh, – he feels like a 16-year-old kid. It says in this article that was uh, written this evening, actually, um, by John Keim, Keim, whatever his name John is. Keim, John Keim, Washington football team, ESPN insider. Yes, um, sir. You got it. Yeah, but do you think Alex Smith is the same Alex Smith if he plays? That's impossible to tell. He's missed a whole season plus of football. I mean, he got hurt in November 2018, so he missed – you know, December, early January. Um, well, I guess the Skins probably didn't have a January, any January games. If they did, it was like the first week in oh, January. That's the counter. He said the R word. Ah, Skins. damn it! <laughs> that's gonna be hard, dude. I wonder how many announcers are gonna do that this year. I don't know. I'd be willing to bet a lot. You, you know, you know how many announcers called the kept calling the uh, um. Rams, the St. Louis Rams, yeah. after they moved to L.A. and the same thing with the Chargers. But that's, that's not that big of a deal. No, it's this is, this. Is, yeah, I, I said, the, I said yeah. <laughs> Washington. But, yeah, but. Uh, what was I, the question again? Because you threw me off with your I I, I, I I was thinking about this before this episode today. Um, I was like, I should have a counter on how many times we slip up and say Redskins. Ah, you said it. Number no, two. No, no. I'm just kidding. Uh, but. I, I was like, we should have a counter on the lowest score I like that. wins. I like that. But j- just for fun. So I'm winning Dan's up one to nothing. But a- as I mentioned, do you think Alex Smith is prepared and he will be the same Alex Smith? I would I don't say think no. So. No, I would say no. I'm And I don't think you can expect him to be. Like I said, I mean, he got hurt in November. He missed, you know, two months of the season. Well, the Redskins. Ag- God! No, I didn't. Two! Two! The Washington football <laughs> team. The Washington football team. Um, <laughs> That's two. I'm didn't, winning. Didn't have any playoff games, obviously, that season. And then he missed all of last year. And um, 
No one expected him to play last year, I don't think. I don't yeah. think that was the expectation. He was just sitting in the um, booth with Dan Snyder. I feel like in September they said he was out that entire season and he did end up missing the whole the whole year. And really, excuse me, his future was in question for much of that off season, for really now two off seasons. Two off seasons? Yeah. Yeah, um, pretty uh, two. So I I don't think you can expect him to be the same Alex Smith. Where he, to, to, for him to play at the level he was playing when he got hurt because he was p- playing really well. People forget how well Washington was playing when he got hurt. Um, and, you know, he was a big part of that. So, no, I don't think you can expect him to be the same player. Nobody's the same after a big injury, but nobody's going to be the same after they almost get their leg amputated. Yeah. And all the surgeries, 17 surgeries, infections, um, all sorts of complications with that. I no, I don't think you can expect him to have the same um, production that he had before. And I think that's an honest and what most people would say uh, either way. Yeah, so it's great to see him back, though. I'm happy oh, as absolutely. heck for him. Absolutely. I'm, and what, I, a, what, a what a great story. What a great story. What a great story. So that's a 30 for 30. I mean, quite honestly, it kind of writes itself. Uh-huh. Um, so I hope we get that someday. We'll see. All right, so staying with Washington, um, some history made um, via Adam Schefter. Um, the Washington football team hired a new president to b- replace Bruce Allen. First off, let me just clap about that because Bruce Allen's gone. Oh, he's terrible. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see who replaced him. Former a former NFL player looked like he played for the Cardinals and the Browns. Jason Wright. Yep. It's a historic hire for Washington. Um, let's see here. He will be responsible for leading the organization's business divisions, including operations finance, sales, marketing, uh, he, according to Adam Schefter right now, becomes the first black president of an NFL team. Yeah, it's, Wright it's a big spent hire. seven years as an NFL running back, earned his MBA with high honors from the U- University of Chicago Booth School of Business, became a partner for the global strategy and management consulting firm McKisney and & Company, and... He's now the president of the Washington football team. Um, good hire, bad hire. Yeah, uh, first off, anybody's better than Bruce Allen at oh, this point, for sure. But he seems young. Here's where he, here's where he has other candidates beat. He's got the best of both worlds. He played in the NFL. He was a player. He understands what it takes to be um, a professional athlete in the NFL and how to compete. And, and how to win. I mean, maybe on the Browns he didn't win very much. Sad face. But <laughs> on the f- on the other side of that, here's a guy who has... Here's a guy, as Chris Collinsworth is going to say this fall a lot, um, who has a, ma- a master's in business, in, in, you know, a business degree and has the experience running a... a cons- or not running, with a consulting firm and things of that nature. So he has both the educational requirements and I think the experience knowing hey look I played professional football I know the understand the relationships what it takes to um, you know maybe may, maybe not you know the the day-to-day things but the big picture operations I think he's a great hire um, and you know he's I think he can make it a big difference there I really do well m- my take on this is I feel like he's a little young, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, could that be a good thing? Could that be a bad thing? Um, I don't know. But, I mean, it, the requirements are there, like you said. Oh, my and gosh. Yeah. From a it's business impressive. side, he could be 20 times better than Bruce Allen was. Oh, my gosh. But and he is, knows football, too, so that's a big aspect, too. I, I I just hope Washington made the right decision and hired a competent president because— Seems pretty competent. No, I, I know that, but yeah. uh, I'm trying to put this in the nicest way possible. <laughs> Is he too young? Like, it, he seems really young. What is he, 36, 37? I think 36. Yeah. I mean, I mean for, uh, for a team like this, 
I feel like you would want somebody qualified but very experienced, you know, like doing years and years of this stuff, you know, because I, I don't want a team hiring somebody. And like I said, I'm not saying he's not qualified, but has he ever had a role in the front office of a football organization? Well, no, he hasn't. Yeah, he, he that, hasn't. That, that's my worry here because – like, th- could what happens if something goes wrong? He has the experience, but how will it translate to running this football team? But uh, any hire is better than Bruce Allen, and I wish him all the best. Yeah. Um. um what What are your thoughts on this hire? I told you, I I like it. I think it's I think it's a good any hire. Other, any other thoughts? Uh. Uh, my head's empty, Josh. You know this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think um, it's good they I think got one a good, former player in, though. Yeah, one good quote he had at the end here of this um, ESPN article that I'm reading um, was all about, you know, people doing their job and giving, the, uh, you know, the tools to succeed are kind of on everybody's shoulders on a football team. And he said, you know, it's kind of the same way with a front office. You want to have all the pieces in motion. And I think, you know, Washington has made the right decisions to bring in, at least on paper, people who are competent and are solid choices, I think, to lead this team. Um, so I, I, I think it's a good hire. I get the concern that he's a little young. He doesn't have any uh, experience in a front office. But I think his educational background, his his ed- his uh, employment background working with a consulting firm, you have to have pretty good management skills to, you know, to, to do that. And, of course playing for seven seasons for I can, four different teams, it says here in this article. Um, I think that kind of gives him, like I said, the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, and he can uh, and he can help. Oh, I just blanked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I he, can, he can help the Redskins, I think, in the long. <clears throat> Bang! Three to nothing. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I haven't Thank seen it you. for too long. <laughs> He can help Washington really make I will, a difference. I will tally in, this up at the, the end of In the, the long night. run. I, I don't know if you're going to see – here's the thing. I don't know if you're going to see a difference immediately, especially with how this season is going to be different than any other season that's ever been played with, with – likely without fans. I don't know how – you know, every team is doing a little Washing, bit. Washington uh, – it's up to the NFL teams, the clubs. Yeah, they, they, they make the final decision. I, I know some fans are doing – or fans. Some teams are doing like 10%, 15% capacity, whatever. Um but I think in the long term, you're going to see that this is a good hire. And maybe maybe they find, if if he's not a good fit for the team president, maybe they find a good fit for him somewhere else yeah. in the organization. Mm-hmm. And, and I think he could work. But in, in general, I think it will work. And I think you just got to give it some time and you'll see some results. In general, I think Washington is moving closer and closer for a step in the right direction with all these hires, the senior VP of media content, Julie Donaldson from NBC Sports Washington. She's doing a great job. She's promoting change. And the new hire, this president, Yeah, I. it just goes to show that there's finally an initiative to bring change that there wasn't yes. beforehand. Yes. And I've been hearing minority owners are still trying to push Dan Snyder out. If we can get Dan Snyder out, man, I'll be the happiest man alive. That's not going to happen, but... <sighs> That's not going to happen? No. How come? Dan Snyder's not going to sell the team. They have to... Have to f- First of all, they have to find something illegal that he did, if, and they have to get... Um, you have to get the whole NFL on board. You have to get, like you said, all the, all the yeah. minority owners. So it... If he now, if he'd been involved with this bombshell story about the the Redskins, mm, good with the time they were the Redskins, yeah, their You're culture. Good. I won't count you for that. Their culture and the you know their sexual harassment allegations and from I think it was thirteen, fourteen former employees of the team. Um, A lot, and uh, you know initially he was one of the main ones mentioned. Uh, well, rumors were flying around about that. Rumors were, but um, there were. It and was they found never out. The post article. They found out that you know he never was really involved with that directly. It was more, you know, n- nothing else has really come out about that uh, recently. But I think if they had found that he had done something like that, then there's no doubt that the minority owners would say, "You're gone." You know, you got to sell the team. I, I feel um, like that story really pushed the bowling ball to promote change. It got the oh ball yeah, rolling. oh yeah, for sure, and I. 
And as much crap as I give Dan Snyder, and I think most Washington fans do, um, Washington sports teams in general, I think he's he's played a pretty big hand in making change here for the short term. And um, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to give him too much credit now because he's Dan Snyder after all. But I think he's done a good job of promoting and showing that, hey, we – we're different. This is different. We're changing for the better, and it starts with the Washington football team. And here, here you know, here's what we're going to try to do. Well, yeah, I'm just hoping change is going to continue to come and come, and hopefully get some wins there. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be great to see. Hopefully, who knows? Long journey ahead. Moving on to. Staying in the NFC East, the Dallas Cowboys seven hours ago via Ian Rappaport and Jane Slater of NFL Network, the Cowboys defensive tackle Gerald McCoy feared to have a torn ACL. A uh, big blow for the Cowboys defense. Yeah. Um their defense was looking pretty stacked after their signing of former Vikings defensive end Everson Griffin. Mm-hmm. Oh my, I, I just don't like hearing that name with the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, me either. Oh, my. But quick notes on the Dallas Cowboys. Dan, this next topic I want to get your thoughts on. Des Bryant reported to be ch- working out for the Baltimore Ravens after tearing his ACL in practice with the New Orleans Saints. He's been out of football for a long time. Do you think he deserves a, another chance with the Baltimore Ravens? Man, to have a weapon like him. But it's so difficult to put that, to answer that question because I just don't know what kind of level he's playing at now. From stuff I've read and what I've seen on social media of him actually playing, of him running routes and working out and things like that, you know, they say he's in football shape now. Um, And man, what a big asset he would be to our offense. With that's already, I think, pretty stacked, especially with, um, you know, all the weapons we brought back. Of course, drafting J.K. Dobbins and being able to use him. That was a good pick, by the oh way. Oh my gosh! I still pick. like that pick, J- J.K. I love it. Dobbins. Um, they can use him in the running game and, of course, passing game as well. So, uh, I really, I really think if they like what they see, they're going to pull the trigger, and I, I, I think they, they quickly are on either in the AFC side or either on the Chiefs level or even better than the Chiefs I think quite frankly I think they have a I think they have a better defense you know that we just choked in the playoffs against the Titans as simple as that um, we did not have a good performance credit to them but I'm getting off off kilter here you see you get me on the Ravens and I talk about the past <laughs> and I talk about the losses and I talk about the heartbreak Josh you do it to me um so I, I, I don't know if he's going to be the same player because the you know the last time he played was 2018. He didn't play at all last season. Um, no one really knows. Another he, sad story, though. No one really He gets released by the Cowboys and tears his ACL mm-hmm. in a non-contact injury. Yeah. and Crazy stuff. You know, he didn't really have much... You know, he didn't have any really issues with the team. I mean, he would complain now and then to, you know... Da- I think he and Dak had a sort of a strained relationship um, in those last couple of years he was there, but... Dak's not very good, so that's understandable. Uh, and you know, he—I don't think he really ever got a fair chance to to really bounce back. He, um, so this whole thing was bizarre, and I, I was surprised it's taken this long. Um, you know, they talked about Antonio Bryant. I was like, no, please, God, Antonio Brown, not Antonio Bryant. I've I've heard Brown's name. Ru- They've rumoring been, around. He's worked out with Lamar, and of course, he's related to he's related to Hollywood Brown. They're cousins. Oh, so um, oh, Antonio that's Brown the and connection. Hollywood Brown on the Ravens. Oh my God! Please don't say that. Turn the, turn the franchise upside down. I why do don't not you? want him. Please, God, no. <laughs> um, but I I like the Des Bryant move. I think I think it all depends on you know I it, on how he gets along with John Harbaugh too, because you know John Harbaugh is. Um, man who wants things done the right way. Yeah, but he, he but he also likes to have some fun too. 
Yeah. You know, he's not like Bill Belichick or anything like that. A guy who's just a sad sack. G- and like John Harbaugh is better than his brother Jim Harbaugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. John oh, yeah. Harbaugh wouldn't have as many meltdowns as Jim Harbaugh would. <laughs> he throws his headset 30 yards down the sidelines <laughs> on a penalty. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, Jim Jim Harbaugh's a hothead. So, I, I think, I see, I've gotten off kilter again. Um, that's what this podcast is about, though. You know, I, I kind of just having fun. I start here. on the line, and then I do the old, the, the well, old loopy hey, loop. We're just you know? having fun here on the Kirby on Sports Podcast. Are, Thanks once again for all your support, as always. So we appreciate it. I think it could work out, uh, but again, anything goes when you're in the off season, right? Um, you you don't you can't see them play. You can't see them hit the field and put pads on and things like that. So I'm going to say right now I, th- I I have a good feeling it could work, and I have a good feeling that they will sign him um, depending on how the workout goes. And then I think it, if it goes well with John Harbaugh, he's signed immediately. So we'll see. Interesting stuff. Uh, I hope Dez gets another shot. I do too. Because after that ACL injury, it's like, Come on, a non-contact injury, and he's out for one or two years. It's crazy stuff. So that's about all the NFL topics we have on this part of the show. Before we move on to the next segment, once again, we would like to thank our brand new sponsors at Regroup Building Services. They do a great job. They uh, They specialize in custom homes, putting on decks, Pretty much anything. Flooring, you name it, they pretty much do it. I, I just want you to go ahead and check out regroupbuildingservices.com. You can check them out. If you need work done, you want a custom home, you need a deck put in, make sure you get on that website, regroupbuildingservices.com. They'll get you covered. Make sure you tell them Josh sent you. All right, we're back. Um, So... Let's talk some MLB. We haven't talked about MLB no, in a little while. Um, first off, round of applause. The Orioles yeah. are smacking the Nats. How about that? How Woo! about that? Uh, now Dan has something to brag about me on this podcast. Yeah. The Orioles are 12-9 and nine in third place in the American League East. So... Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Are, are teams aside for the time being in as a whole, how do you like this MLB season so far? I like it because, and I think I said this before the season started, we've seen a lot of teams play that don't normally get a chance to play each other in a regular season. Um, w- like, for example, a lot more American League teams are playing more more National League teams, and I like that. Yeah, I do so, too. Hands you know, down, one of the best. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. seeing teams you don't normally see in a 162-game exactly. season. In more times. You know? Exactly right. Um, I think it's. I think that's my key takeaway right now. I've, I've really enjoyed seeing that. Uh, so, you know, I, I really have, don't really have a lot of thoughts on it. I, I think that, you know, the NL East is an interesting division. To say the least. I mean, the NL East. The Marlins are in first. For but some. they're nine and six. Half those games, like they were canceled or postponed because they exactly. popped positive. Yeah, and and the Braves. If are the team who had the most positive COVID tests go on to win the <laughs> World Series, I will be laughing all the way home. And there's no surprise in the NL Central and the NL West. <laughs> I think, I think the order to those divisions was expected. Well, especially beca- the Cardinals are five and four. Oh yeah, they had a bunch of positive tests as well, right? They had a bunch of games suspended. Yeah, this is so bizarre. I mean, how are they going to count that up at the end of the season? Are they going to have to make games up for what they missed? They don't have time, I don't think. Yeah, they're going to have to be pushing. I'm I sure. mean, I, if this keeps going on, I don't think the league's going to be able to finish. I've been saying that all along. So, r- regardless, my takeaway the season. Um, the Dodgers and the Astros, Joe Kelly gets suspended eight games for yeah. not even hitting an Astros player. Sticking his tongue out. <laughs> and, yeah, he gets eight games oh for sticking God. his tongue out? <laughs> I mean, the Astros cheated, plain and simple. Oh, yeah. I mean, Dusty Baker got fined for that. The bench is cleared, and they were six feet apart with masks. <laughs> it was like... Oh, yeah. Let, let's just go argue six that feet apart hilarious. with masks on. Oh of course, if somebody's going to start that during what 
is going on right now. <laughs> uh, I mean, there should be a fine, but Joe Kelly, eight games? I I, I don't think <laughs> pass balling it behind an asterisk player and over top of his head warrants eight games, which in a 162-game season is like 18, 19 games. Well, the pitches itself, there was a couple pitches he threw where he, he was thrown behind him a couple times. <clears throat> um, I he did, did it with a couple different players too, so he should have been tossed. I think for he should have been tossed. But and the given suspension a fine. is insane. He got suspended more than any other player who cheated. Uh huh. By the way, just so uh-huh. we're clear. Uh huh. So I think that's been the ultimate, ultimate takeaway from that. Also, he like doubled down and tripled down. You know, he was he's been angry ever since then talking about this. And really getting passionate about it and yeah. using some colorful language that we, we won't repeat on these airwaves. But <laughs> <laughs> but I like Joe Kelly a lot, man. I like his I like his fiery attitude. I, I like, I like how he just mocked attitude. the guy. Yeah. Stuck his tongue out like a child. He's like a child, like a little you four-year-old. You all cheated. <laughs> <laughs> you he didn't sh- see that, but I stuck my tongue out. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> when, you, when you do podcasting, you have to tell them what's going on. So, um, but theater of the mind. But yeah. It's um, it's ridiculous, man. Like, uh, I just I don't I don't get it. I I don't I like the MLB to justify it. To be quite honest with you, to understand why, and uh, you know they're not going to have to. They're you know they're the ma- they're Major League Baseball, so uh, I just don't understand it. To be honest, eight th- games is just insane to I me. I think it goes back to Rob Manford too. A lot of people dislike M- Rob Manford, yeah. including contributor uh, Prospects Live, Jason Kamlowski. He has. <laughs> Voiced his displeasure about Rob Manfred multiple times on this podcast. So, I, I mean, Rob Manfred's decision making, I can't, I can't. I'm s- not a fan of him either. I mean, I mean, I, I can't really say if that was the breaking point, mm-hmm. Rob Manfred's decision. But a lot of people didn't like Rob Manfred, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was part of it, that he just pushed down the band hammer hard. My next takeaway from this season so far, Mm -hmm. the Nationals and their pitchers chirping from the stands, (laughs) especially in this Orioles series. um, There are, obviously, Strasburg's arguing balls and strikes. Martinez doesn't like some of the calls. And then next thing you know, an umpire just throws an ejection. Davey Martinez is in the dugout. Like, who's getting ejected here? It was Steven Strasburg. He tips his <laughs> cap and leaves. <laughs> then Anibal Sanchez does the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. And yeah, you, you can hear this stuff live during the game. Right. Because there there's no nobody fans. there. Yeah, I think that just amplifies it. And <laughs> I, I just why? think it's crazy. I mean, umpires <laughs> They're here. They're getting tossed from the stands. Umpires hear terrible things. Umpires and officials hear terrible things all the time. And in fact, I would say most of the time, nine times out of ten, they're used to this abuse that they get from fans and ridicule and things like that. So why? I mean, is it, it the only umpires in Major League Baseball have this power trip and this dynamic, which I don't like, which is I'm in charge and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be the, dis- the disciplinarian and things like that. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. And you have guys like Joe West, and I, I can't stand Joe West. Okay, he's the worst. <laughs> um, but he's one of them. It, but it's just, it's just just an attitude in general of, you know, I have the power to throw anybody out of the game I want to throw out of the game, essentially at any time. And I don't need a whole lot of, you know, reason to do so. And I feel like that happens a lot. Uh, but I hate it. I, I hate that dynamic in baseball. It's especially true in baseball because, I mean, you have direct, you know, contact with um, throwing people out. You don't really, can't really do You can do it in soccer, red carding, but doesn't happen in football really unless you know there's a helmet to helmet collision yeah. or something yeah so i i don't like that i think it's ridiculous especially because in, you know unless they were like being straight up hateful to the umpire which it just sounds like they were just arguing they're you know, just in pitches. the stands like fans it's ridiculous it's ridiculous <laughs> it's just stupid it's just the whole thing is dumb yeah but something that's even more stupid i believe it was the astros in the athletics and they had a brawl recently that wasn't six feet apart. And an Astros coach started it. Yeah, We're going on a rant here. Yeah, The Astros <laughs> coach was chirping at a player, an athletics player, and next thing you know, 
the athletics player, charges at the Astros coach. I don't know his name. (laughs) And they start punching. (laughs) There's no bubble in the MLB. Right. And it's a problem. You look at this and players are punching each other. (coughs) Oh, man. Had to clear my throat for that next part. There's no bubble. Yep. You've seen players pop positive for COVID. Yep. You know the risks. And has there been any consequences from this? Have you heard of anything? Because I haven't. Can you Google that or something? Because I have not seen any, any repercussions so far. Any. (laughs) And I'm sort of surprised because it's like, I, I don't even know how to put this into terms. You are risking the sport being canceled because of the Astros coach. The Astros are cheaters. And you're risking <laughs> the sake of the game. It's a very for a fight. spirited report. For Josh a fight. Kirby. It's for a fight. I know. And they were punching. Okay, here we go. They weren't social distancing. You ready? You ready? I want to hear this. So... Here we go. The center fielder, Astro, Astros, athletic center fielder, Ramon Lair. Oh God, I'm so bad at names. <laughs> Lorena. Let's just say that, okay? Four game suspension, originally six, and an undis- undisclosed fine for charging the Astros dugout and causing the benches to clear. Alex Cintron, who, by the way, played in, played baseball back in the day, the Astros hitting coach, 20 games... That's a lot. That's good. And That's an good. undisclosed he fine gotten the whole for his season role for in inciting and escalating the conflict. Well, you know, tw- 20 games from now is a good chunk of the season. You're talking, a, he, most of the season's already over by then. I hate um, it, though. I hate it. Because the, he started a brawl, and, yeah, you know, I'm going to say this again. There was no bubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I was very upset when I saw this, and I was like, what if somebody had COVID and they didn't know it? A right. false positive, false right. negative, and, and gave it to they somebody get else. COVID. And, and now you got a big brawl like that, and you got you know 25, you point, 25 right? 30 players, maybe more in there that who could could get it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I totally, I totally agree with you, man. I I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and you know M- the MLB should have. I mean the, the the thing is they should have had a plan. First of all. You know, they, they moved the season back to July. Like, uh, you know, they moved it back, for, what is it, four months, technically. Mm-hmm. You know, they had time to get a bubble in place and to do things like that. But um, a bubble but at the, the time, MLB mm-hmm. would be hard. Yeah, I agree with you. It would be very hard. But these other leagues have proven that it, it can be done. That's that's the thing. Yeah, but it's indoors, and the MLB is mainly outdoors. They There would have to be, like, hub cities. You know? Yeah, like, but the but but here's the thing with that. I mean, if you're outside, the chances of getting, you know, COVID nineteen compared to indoors is is you know, yeah, was yeah, way that's less. Tr- that's you know? true. Yeah, I, I totally forgot they're playing outdoors. And I I had a friend at work. He and I were discussing this, and he talked about having like like we said with other other leagues. You know, hub cities, four or five hub cities around the country, and the teams would play amongst each other in the group and then the playoffs would be you know whatever teams were left I think it was the top two seeds or whatever were left so uh, I think you can make it work but it's I mean it's too late now you can't obviously can't have that but this is you know I I didn't even know about this this is this is crazy (laughs) this you didn't you didn't see that no I missed it. it's all over social media must have missed it Astros coach starts fight Mm -hmm. they're the cheaters and I, I hate it even more because they cheated. Yeah. I'm j- It makes it all the more better that the Nationals kicked their butt in seven games and won the World Series. Agreed. Makes it all the more better. And, you know, they got they had no penalty for doing what they did. And, uh, you know, they, they deserve to get uh, their tongue. They deserve to have their people's... What am I trying to say? They deserve to have people look at them badly, like Joe Kelly did to them. Of course, yep. Joe Kelly did the old, you know, tongue out, <laughs> spinning routine, whatever he did. I mean, I, I mean, going back to that Astros A's fight, that Joe Kelly thing seems like nothing. Oh yeah, he and didn't he do he didn't do anything wrong. Games. It's ridiculous. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Cintron should have had at least you know thirty games. I think maybe forty games. 
Yeah. Or maybe the season because this is what they're trying to avoid. Like you said, they don't want they don't want they don't even want handshakes. They don't even want high fives or you know that sort of stuff in the in the dugout. But you're seeing it anyway. Mm-hmm. They want players to be wearing masks, but a lot of players aren't wearing them in the dugout, and they're in close quarters. New era, I um, think, actually made a line of masks, like on field masks, mm-hmm. with the player's number. That's cool. I, I thought that was very interesting to match their hats and stuff. I've seen a lot of players not wearing them, though. So, I mean, I think it just depends on... No, it depends on if you're active playing or not. Major League Baseball is not inf- really enforcing it, to be, it to, in, in my in my opinion. Yeah. But uh, it, I don't know how long the season... See, I thought the season was going to end just after that first week when you had all those Marlins players test positive and they had played... I, I honestly thought so, too. And they had I'm played not three sure or how four they games, overcame that. And they had three or four games in and you had that happen already. I'm kind of amazed that they've made it this far and not have a, a bunch of other positive tests. It's great. I mean, uh-huh. I'm glad. I'm glad we get to watch baseball again. Um, but I'm glad. It's crazy. But I, I, I mean, a fight like that, I'm going to go back to it once again. It just can't happen during these con- times. It cannot. Mm-hmm. I agree. It cannot. I totally agree. Uh, that's my last point on that. Um, other than that, the Yankees are still red hot. The yeah, Twins they're, are they're, red hot. they're loaded. The Twins are loaded. The Athletics are in first place. But... I, I'll tell you what, I, I, I want to make my case for the Orioles yeah. and Ugh. how they could possibly make a run. And I've been researching this in years past. The first 60 games haven't been an issue for Baltimore. <laughs> it ha- They have not. Right. And uh, they could be Cinderella story. <laughs> Who knows? Well, the bizarre thing about them. Is they're eight and one on the road, they're four and eight at home. You know, if they're going to be a playoff team, quote unquote playoff team, they have got to pick up the plate at home, and they've you know they've got to at least get to eight and eight here soon. Um, and they're seven and three in their last ten. They've they've been red hot, and really before those couple losses to the Nats, I was like, man, this could be a heck of a season. They're 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 three games out of first right now. They're probably not going to catch the Yankees, and let's let's face it, they're not gonna they're not gonna beat out the Yankees this year. I, I don't think that's expected, but they could sneak in, and depending on how they can how they play the Rays this year and uh, all the times they play them, you never know. But I think the the cool thing about the Orioles and your your father mentioned this earlier, you know they they really don't have any big name players at all. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been able to do it with really just a, a group of guys that. To put it quite nicely, are you know Triple A, you know minor league baseball level players. You know what I mean, <laughs> or guys who are kind of bounced around from team to team, and um, <clears throat> they've been able to do it so far though, and I, I can't explain why, but they've been one of the biggest surprises. I know one of the ESPN preseason polls said they might not win ten games. Well, they're twelve and nine right now, so. They've already surpassed my expectation. I, I thought I thought twenty wins was the the max for me. That's what I thought they would win. But they're closer to that than I ever thought they'd be at this point in the season. So, you know, their their pitching has been pretty solid for the most part. Um they've they've had some games where they've gotten shock, shell shocked early on, and I think that's to be expected. The front, you know, their 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 starting rotation is not very good. But their bullpen for the most part has impressed me. Considering all things consider being being considered here, and I hope um, I hope they can continue to get production because they're they're really hitting the ball well right now. I don't have the hitting stats pulled up, but um, as as a team collectively, they're they're hitting a lot of home runs and and really hitting the ball over the yard. So it's it's really really nice to see. Yeah, just oh. shocked. It's just shocking. <laughs> yeah, I am too. But once again, like we said for these bubbles, the NHL and the NBA, expect an underdog. Don't leave the underdogs out. That's what I think is great about the short, no, the shortened season in the major in in MLB. Um, the Orioles have been the big the big talk of the underdogs so far. Mm-hmm. It's played really well, but you know, in the in the NBA playoffs and in the NHL playoffs, it could be anybody right now. I mean, these play in games and all those things that that uh, you know led to the point they are now. I think this could be the season of the underdog, too. I really do think that. I wouldn't be surprised. All right, Dan. Uh, one last mini topic. Kay. I want this all to be you. Oh, boy. But not a long topic.
topic. Um, NCAA football. Some conferences are canceling. Some conferences are only doing co- in conference play. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Do you think the NCAA should play this season, extend the spring, or cancel altogether? I, I know different conferences have done different That's... things. Have has the ACC ruled on anything? What are your thoughts? Big well, picture. Well, here's what the ACC and the SEC have announced: they're going to play games. Uh, 47 minutes ago, the SEC football schedule is here on CBS Sports. Um, September 26th is the first game. That's Alabama, Georgia. Uh, or is that on October 7th? No, the f- starts September 26th, and then Alabama, Georgia play on October uh, 17th. So the ACC and the SEC have announced they're going to play, like you said, interconference play. Um, the Big Ten and the Pac-12 um, announced last week that they were not going to play. And I don't know if the Big 12 has made a decision. Um, They have not made a decision yet, but this was two days ago on CNN that nine uh, University of Oklahoma players tested positive for COVID-19. So far, right now, the Big 12 is going to play. So majority rule, three out of five of the the major Power 5 conferences. I think they're going to try to play. Uh, I just don't know how it's going to work. As far as, so what do we do once we get a champion in each of the conferences? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very confusing because each conference determines if they want to play or not. But how's a championship going to work or anything? And and you have, um, you know, that can be figured out. But that's something that is always set way in advance. And especially having a playoff system, how would it work with with just the three um, it it would almost be like they'd have to have three the the three champions from the three conferences and then uh, three at large teams from the three conferences as yeah. well to have a short tournament to see who wins. But that to me that that's not that's not a real season. You're 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 losing out on the two conferences, especially in the Big Ten, which has produced you know of course Ohio State, who's been so dominant in the last you know in the, it really since the history of the college football playoff. Um, I, I don't know how it's going to work. Um, I'm interested, just as interested as everyone else to see. I definitely want I want definitely want them to play. I don't know if um, if safety wise that's the right thing to do because I just don't being college being a college campus where you have a lot of partying on the weekends and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be tough to enforce a bubble um, among these student athletes. It's it's just going to be very tough. It, um, it is. I I I, th- I don't think the season will happen at least in the way we expect it to yep. so that's why i wanted to get your thoughts because former hokey alumni oh i i definitely want to see college football but we gotta we gotta be smart here and think about health and safety of the players as well i i, I think moving it to spring is an option but you got to think also about the guys who are going to be drafted um especially out of these power five conferences where the majority of these elite college football players come from right um you have to de- they have to decide their futures. I know guys like Trevor Lawrence, Justin yep. Fields, they've uh-huh. come out and have been in support and wanting to play. Uh, especially Justin Fields tweeted uh, yesterday that he, he shared a petition that says, look, we want to play football. Uh, he wanted the Big Ten to, to resume football. So, But what if by chance by the, the ACC decides mm-hmm. they're not going to play because COVID takes a turn for the worse or something like that? Right. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is set to be in the draft, the NFL draft, this next upcoming NFL draft. Yes. If he doesn't get any playing time, stuff like that, what's that mean? I think it just <laughs> it means how important the combine and the pro day are going to end up being, quite honestly. Um, I don't know how you – I mean, you can. he's certainly going to be a very high draft pick, even if he doesn't play at all this year. Um, I, I don't think that's anyone's going to debate that just based on his performance in the last few years. Uh, so, you know, that's I think that's the ultimate question, and I think that's one that nobody really has an answer for right now. How would you'd have to ask the NFL GM? You know, how would you handle or a scout or scouts even? You know, how would you handle this situation? Um, I I have no idea, but I think there I think there's enough tape out there of of him. Um, 
and of course the pro day and the combine, he I think he would set himself apart from other quarterbacks. So he would be a top five pick, I think. So um, either so, way. He's so already I mean he if he came out this past draft, he would have been a probably a top five pick then anyways. So you think if they end top up 10. not playing, mm-hmm. it's gonna come down to film and the combine. For guys like him, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's no, be, I, I was just getting your thoughts. It's, that's it's, all. it's harder for more guys um, <clears throat> that are middle ground players, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like guys who get taken third, fourth round, uh-huh. late second round. That's going to be more tough. Uh, but it's just going to be weird having just the you know the big three conferences playing. And, and uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Once again, um, it's going to be really interesting. This is just also new. <laughs> uh oh. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I know. I know. But, anyways, that's about all we have on this edition. A lot of great sports talk. Covered I'm a lot of ground, man. In. Yeah. We have covered a lot of ground. Once again, I can't thank each and every one of you for your support. You know who you are. If you're listening to this, you know who you are. Thank you so much for your support. As always, the Kirby on Sports Podcast is part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network, anchor.fm slash Mayo Please. Thank you once again to Productions by Q- Quet for our new music intro. Thank you to him. Thanks, as always, to MPT Now Productions and Dave Johnson as well. We're proud to be sponsored by PM Plus Reserves in Regroup Building Services. Make sure you check us out on all streaming platforms via the Mayo Please or the Kirby on Sports podcast. For Dan Dembski, I'm Josh Kirby. Till the next episode, we say so long and peace out.